Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Anime Undraft. I'm your host, Alec, and these are my co-hosts, Rolando. Hi. And Drew. Hello. Since this is our first episode, I'm going to go ahead and get a quick introduction to the podcast and what we're all about out of the way here. So basically, we came up with this idea just a couple weeks ago <clears throat> to combine our love for anime with our love for drinking different craft beers that are delicious. <clears throat> We came up with this idea for Anime on Draft to to basically review a different beer each week and then pair that with talking about our favorite animes of the current season. So we're currently going over spring 2017 and uh, that's going to be that's going to be what we're doing this uh, in this podcast. So um, we're really looking forward to it. Um, I also want to get some quick introductions of each of us. Um, out there so you guys know who we are, what we're about, what we like in anime, what we like in drinks, etc. So I'll start, like I said before, my name is Alec. Um, I'm My journey in anime kind of started uh, as a kid um, watching Dragon Ball Z and just things like that. Um, uh, ever since then, I've been watching different animes more so recently than, uh, than a few years ago. I've been watching a lot of anime very recently. Um, my favorite drink, uh, my favorite animes. I'll start there. Uh, favorite anime is probably Steins Gate, is definitely one of my favorites. And then my least favorite anime, bar none, is School Days. Um, thanks for trolling me on that one, uh, Rolando. <laughs> um, my favorite beers would actually be uh, stouts, specifically, probably the peanut butter milk stout by Belching Beaver. Um, but I'm not a big IPA fan. It's just too bitter for my, for my taste. And then finally, um, I have a couple, I'm just going to talk about a couple favorite video games cause we may touch on that at some point in the future. So my favorite video game of all time is, uh, Majora's Mask, Legend of Zelda and the Legend of Zelda franchise is my favorite video game franchise. Um, Rolando, how about you, uh, give us a quick introduction. Hello, I'm Rolando. Um, I first was introduced to anime back in when I was a kid. My sister used to record episodes of Sailor Moon on VHS and watch them after school. And then afterwards, she kind of moved up to a show called Fushigi Yugi, also known as The Mysterious Play in English. Um, that was probably like the first, like, you know, I guess serious anime that I saw and then after that moved on to Gundam Wing and so on and then I fell off didn't really watch any um, for a few years and then in high school I started watching again and then way more back then and then here I am now um, in terms of favorite um, out of recent memory I would say Erased is one of my favorites Steins Gate is good too um, and then in terms of worst, there's, I mean, I've seen a lot of bad anime, but I would say Glass Slip is probably like one I can remember of recent memory that is really bad. Um, it's, it's not good. It's not good at all. And then what were the other topics? It was f favorite game, right? Favorite, favorite beers and game. Okay. Um, in terms of favorite beers... Um, I would say Delirium Tremens and uh, Prankster are good. Um, more on the bitter side, um, I would say Pliny the Elder is also um, one of my favorites. And then favorite games, um, Uncharted series and Persona series. Very cool, very cool. Uh, Drew, would you mind a quick introduction of yourself as well? Yeah, so like you said, I'm Drew. Um, where I started in anime. I think everybody remembers uh, going home as a kid and watching Toonami and um, you know waiting for the next episode of Dragon Ball Z and going to school the next day and talking about it. That's kind of where I started. Um, but didn't watch too much other than that. Um, until college when um, a couple of my buddies were involved with a uh, anime club 
So I, I would go to their meetings and watch more then. And that's what kind of got me into it more. Um, started watching more and more anime, um, going to conventions and uh, stuff like that. I think my favorite series would have to be the uh, Monogatari series. Um, just all the symbolism um, and everything, the visuals, uh, the head tilts, of course, uh, you know, all the all that is great. Definitely my favorite series. Um, gotta agree with Rolando. Glass Lip is god awful. Don't don't don't. I'm watch so it. glad I've never watched. Don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, please save yourself. Uh, don't watch that show. Um, favorite drinks. I I'm an IPA guy. Uh, Stone Double IPA is good. Um, these guys turned me on to a Red Velvet Stout by uh, Blast Point. I'm not a huge stout guy, but that was turning out to be one of my favorite beers unfortunately it's only a uh, seasonal so it's hard to hard to find other than the uh, winter season uh, video games a big fan of persona series and i just finished up the new mass effect and uh other than the technical issues it was excellent all right thanks guys i really appreciate the great introductions um so now we gotta we kind of have a understanding of um who each of us is. So I'm going to jump into a little more description of what we're going to do here on this podcast. Uh, just a short, short, quick one. Um, like I said, we're going to be discussing different animes uh, from the different seasons that come out. So currently we're going to be talking about animes from spring 2017. Occasionally we'll talk about ones from, from previous seasons. Um, we'll refer back to those if there are similarities between what we're watching, things like that. Um, we're going to be mainly covering uh, for this season, we're mainly going to be covering Attack on Titan Season 2 because the hype is just huge. We're hype. all hyped for it. The hype. internet is hyped for it. <laughs> hype, hype. <laughs> um, and then along with that one, we're going to be um, watching uh, Soccer Request as well. Um, and then we're going to be picking a third show to follow specifically on the show. Um, but we're going to be uh, talking about that a little bit later, about how we're going to decide that that third show. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, shift us over to our, our first segment that we like to call the first pairing. It's the first one because it's the first episode and it's just, it's the pairing of the beer that we've decided for the week. Plus the anime topic of the week, which for this week is attack on Titan. And the beer that we've chosen this week is luckily lucky for me, the belching beaver, <laughs> peanut butter milk stout, which uh, you can get pretty much anywhere. If you're in Southern California, you can get it at, you can go to BevMo, you can go to Vons or Safeway. You can Costco. go to a lot of Costco, like most grocery stores will have it really widely available. Um, really great. Um, it's, it's, as you can imagine, it's a, it's a, it's a stout milk stout. So it's real smooth and it, uh, it's made with peanut butter. So it's got really kind of like a, a peanut buttery taste and smell to it. And it's just really delicious and, I really like it. So, um, Rolanda, you turned you turned us on to this beer. Why did you end up picking it for the first time? Okay, well, I mean, as you mentioned earlier, um, that red velvet nitro stout from Ballast Point is a uh, very seasonal, and so <laughs> we couldn't find it in stores anymore. So, um, um, shifting over from that, we decided to change our first beer to the peanut butter milk stout. Because it's a similar type of drink, it's a stout, but also kind of similar um, flavor palettes. I mean, one is red velvet, like cake like, but this one's peanut butter. They're both like sweeter stouts on that side. Um, and it's honestly just one of my top beers. It's definitely <clears throat> great. I've never had it before, so it'll be it'll be a good experience for me trying it out because all I hear is you guys raving about it. <laughs> I think you're really gonna like it. It's it's really good. Um, so let's go ahead and pour them out, and uh, we'll start the uh, we'll start the first segment of this uh, of this show, and uh, we'll we'll review the beers and be drinking them and mm -hmm. be drinking them. Yes, the most important part. That is the most important part. Don't buy it and don't drink it. I notice like sediment at the bottom. I think it's because they use like real peanut butter, so I wouldn't be afraid of that. Yeah, I can see it at the bottom of my if you're going out my bottle. It. Yeah, it's definitely down there. I'm gonna read for There's you what bit. it says on the on the label. Yeah, sure. America's favorite peanut butter milk stout. 
this silky mm. smooth beer puts us on the map. Troy came up with the idea of combining peanut butter with our beaver's milk stout, and he nailed it. So that gives a little insight to this beer. It's um, Belgian beaver has a milk stout, and they decided to add peanut butter to it. Their milk stout's actually very good as well. <clears throat> I've had that one. Um, I like the peanut butter milk stout a, l- a little better, but their milk stout is also very, very good. Um, a lot, most of the things that Belching Beaver uh, has are are really good, um, the, including their IPA. I actually like their IPA. Yeah, I just had that well, uh, that mango. Here comes the mango IPA last night. It's mm-hmm. pretty good. That one's good. So let's go ahead and get into the our review of the of the beers. Um, cheers, first of all. Cheers, cheers, boys. Um, so I'm gonna give a quick explanation as to how we're gonna be judging these beers. Uh, real fast, we're just gonna go by appearance, smell, taste, the mouth feel, and then an overall impression. After that, we'll give our own personal ratings, and then we'll give a group rating as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off and say I like the color. It's a uh, really dark. Um, it's super like dark. Super dark. It's it's. Yeah. You'd think it would be brown. But it's more like black. If you shine, hit the light kind of from an angle, then it's kind of brown, but it's very dark. So um, in terms of clarity, there really isn't any because you can't see through it. When you pour um, it out, there's not much of a head either. Yeah. It kind of dissipates as it settles. Mm-hmm. It goes away really fast. Um, but I actually I liked the color of the head when it poured out. It was like a chocolatey coffee brown color Yeah. as opposed to mm-hmm. like the typical, you know, like um, cream kind of colored that you see. So I thought it was actually really like pleasing to the eye. Um, let's see for the smell. You can definitely smell the peanut butter. I mean, it is like super. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can smell that and you can smell coffee, coffee. There's like nut. I get a little bit of coffee, but I get more chocolate than coffee for me. Mm -hmm. There is chocolate as well. It's like a, it's like a toasty chocolate Mm -hmm. coffee. Mm -hmm peanut butter almost scent. like a like a it, it crossed between a snickers and a mocha is what it mm, that's a good <laughs> description, I, I actually, actually yeah. think um it it kind of smells like when you bite into a tag along i can see that yeah yeah mm-hmm. if that's a good description because it smells like the taste <laughs> i feel like i feel like most people have had gr- a girl scout cookie tag along at some mm-hmm. point or another um, let's, so what do you guys think of the, what do you think of the taste? Take a quick sip and give me your I mean, thoughts. it's, it's super easy to drink. You would think a beer this dark a, as a stout mm-hmm. would be super heavy, but it's just like, it's, it, it yeah, tastes def- like the, the tag along or the Snickers and it, it goes down smooth. Yeah. It goes down really smooth. Um, and you definitely get the peanut butter like a lot. Mm-hmm. The, I'm, I'm glad they from- had the, the sediment mm-hmm. at the bottom cause it, it, it's just the peanut butter, like it it lingers and it's there and it's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's it's definitely kind of like you're you're drinking like a like a milkshake almost, mm-hmm. like a peanut butter milkshake. And I feel like lot, this would be good over ice cream. It actually, yeah, I have had sure. I have actually had this beer um, in a in a float before. Oh, really? Yes, mm-hmm. that's really good. It was that really bomb. good. A lot of times when you're drinking stouts too, it kind of leaves that like lingering, like heaviness in your mouth, like the mm-hmm. bittery, burnt heaviness. But you don't really get that with this. It's just yeah, it yeah, it, it hits it's you right smooth. at the front, like the the stout flavor that you expect with the peanut butter stuff, and then it goes washes right away. It's um, it's a really pleasant beer to drink. They did a yeah. really really good job. With I think this one. I think the the milk the milk part of it really mellows it out, and that's what makes mm-hmm. it the milk stoutness you know, of it. Yeah, um, <laughs> and that. It's like not super, um, it, it's good cold. I feel like if it were warm, it, it might be a little more like you get that kind of feeling on your tongue, you know, about with the stouts, but having it cold, like, um, like mine is at least definitely mm-hmm. makes it super even easier to drink as well. It's got that creamy texture when you drink it cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's like drinking a milkshake. Like you said, just less thick. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's no um, to be. The, it's not really all that carbonated though it no. kind of is but you don't really feel like fizziness or any bubbles or anything like that it's um you can see bubbles but that's probably why the head disappears so quickly carbonation might be a little low yeah it's not it's not too too carbonated 
um, in terms of uh, in terms of the the mouth feel, I kind of feel like um, when you drink this, it's almost uh, it's almost kind of like you're drinking a flat soda, right? Not like like a really a really like intense root beer almost. Yeah, like, yeah, something like that where it's like you don't. It's not like oh man, like my throat's getting all all hit with carbonation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. It, it definitely is. It's um, it's I like it. I think it's pleasant. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what do you guys think? Well, as, as like an overall impression. You know, what do you what do you think? How, let's start with Drew because you're probably you have the most honest opinion because you've never had it before. So, yeah. like, what's your overall impression? It's it's a good beer for a stout. Like I said, I'm not the biggest stout guy. I, I mean, I'll drink anything, but um, you know, easy to drink. Um, doesn't leave me with that burnt, um, lingering um, aftertaste. Um, super chocolatey. Anybody who loves you know Snickers candies or anything like that will will really love this. I think out of five for me, this is probably a four. Um, definitely had better, but this is this is right up there. This is this is a good beer. Mm-hmm. What about you, Berlando? Um, Well, you know me. I this is one of my favorite beers. Mm-hmm. I love stouts. Um, I would give this a solid four and a half. Okay. Yeah, I I agree with uh, both of you about uh, what you're saying. The flavors and the the like drinkability of, of this beer but uh it being my favorite i might be a little biased but i'm gonna give it a i'm gonna give it a five out of five for this one um so okay. it's probably safe to say we could give this as an, a group rating like a, a four, four and, and a half, half. yeah <laughs> just yeah. Ag- meet aggregate all of it <laughs> mm-hmm. and then divide by three let's do it <laughs> yeah, they did um, a good job well thank you thank you belgian beaver it was an experience yes. i'm definitely gonna go out and try some of their other beers mm-hmm. they have a lot of um they have like really a good options they do. That sounds really good. That one's really good. <laughs> yeah. uh, they've got like their their beers are all kind of just different. Like you wouldn't expect, you know, I don't find horchata beers a lot or peanut butter milk stouts or mm-hmm. a mango IPA. So the brewery does right. a good job of like, you know, bringing random ingredients that you're like, really in a beer and then just making it really good. Yeah, um, they do a similar thing to like what Ballast Point does where they like kind of just introduce something and then see kind of what whether it sticks or not although mm-hmm. i do have to say that having tasted their uh here comes the mango ipa last night um they kind of have like i think i feel like they're a bit more uh conservative i don't know i don't want to say conservative with their <clears throat> with their selections but like they they definitely release stuff that like um you can put it out there and like it'll have like a pretty wide appeal whereas like mm-hmm. um some of ballast point when they like introduce like a flavor infusion into one of their um, beers, like when they introduce like the different sculpin flavors and all of that, sometimes mm-hmm. they can be pretty hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, so now that we've, you know, we've, we've reviewed our beer and we're going to be drinking this while we talk about the, you know, the next topic we have, which is the main anime of this week, um, which is the first episode, episode 26 of um, season two of attack on Titan. So it's finally here, everybody. It's finally here. How many years? Three, three and a half years, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half years. And, and we have it again and we're all super stoked. So I want to just like start it off right out there and just go ahead and ask you guys, what do you think about, you know, this week's episode and what was the impression you got? So episode 26 titled uh, Beast Titan. And by the way, it's been three and a half years. We're going to talk about season one. So don't be, you know, disappointed if you're spoiled because you've had enough time to oh, <laughs> get I mean. in there and watch it. But uh, <laughs> first impressions, um, I liked how it started off with very little recap. You know, we had, uh, mm-hmm. you know, maybe three or four minutes of, you know, kind of what led up to the current event. So we saw um, a little bit of Aaron, Mikasa and Armin's journey up to them capturing Annie, um, which is where, you know, episode 25 left us when. She was, you know, encased in that uh, crystal, and uh, they're like, "Yeah, we we finally got her." Uh, I was I was really happy with that. Um, and then they kind of right before the OP, they left us with this real cryptic, like, "Are there titans in the wall? Like, what's what's going on with that? What did you guys What do you guys think of that?" <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, it was definitely, you know, that was from the end of 
season one. Yeah, that yeah. was literally the cliffhanger from the end of episode 25. There was just the so, Titan face out of the wall. And just hanging and out in there. <laughs> just chilling, just looking at people like, hey, guys, what's up? Uh, I mean, it's it's surprising as always. And I, like, I, I, you know, in true cliffhanger fashion, we still haven't really gotten answers for it. And they've just really managed to take that and peek pique my interest at least more about like what it is and what's going on with pastor Nick being crazy and like yelling about it. And, and just, they've really like done a good job of keeping that mystery like really alive. Yeah. They even put in uh, uh, the eye catch in the middle of the episode. There's like a, there's a little description and like, they're kind of saying like, yeah, the wall cultists um, seem to know a bit more about what's going on than they lead to. And even Mm -hmm. like, you know, saying that um, the material like being used in the walls is similar to that crystal material that Annie encased herself in um, Mm -hmm. when she got captured. So there's kind of like this weird speculation. I know Alec and I discussed this the other day Mm -hmm. um, where it almost kind of seems like the government and the church are kind of working to maybe keep humanity enslaved under under their rule you know like they're used it's like they're using the titans as a way to like keep them you know herded and then as you fear. see you see like the scout group too they kind of know that something else is going on and they're kind of off doing their own thing to maybe revolt against this or do something you know there's there's some sort of disconnect between you know the government and the scout uh the scout uh core as well mm-hmm. so that that's kind of coming through as yeah, well yeah we can discuss more about that speculation later when we talk about like the like the symbolism and the ending theme song Mm -hmm. because like it kind of you know shows a bunch of images that make you kind of think that maybe there's something going on in the background right well speaking of theme hmm? songs do we want to talk about the opening yeah we should definitely the i like the music it was it's the same theme and the same people right and yeah linked 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 horizon linked horizon they did a great job again um you guys what do you what do you think about you know speculations from the uh, from the beginning? I know Rolando, you mentioned a few things the other day that you noticed. Well, um, what I've seen, so I've ha- I have like a couple points. Um, so one of the things you can see is they show seven of the of the scouts. You see Connie, Sasha, John, Armin, Aaron, Mikasa, Erwin, Hanji, and Levi. So like those. Like, I think you can kind of classify them as like the main protagonists of the of this season. And I guess maybe like in general of the show. Um, mm-hmm. So like you can probably tell that like there may or may not be like movement within that group towards like, you know, let's say backstabbing or like betraying. But like I think it's pretty safe to say that they're all like going to be who we're following and not part of like the hybrid human titans group um that is already like they show in the opening just like uh in season one there's that huge cannonball titan with the blonde short blonde hair and he looks like basically like reiner and uh reiner was hanging out with annie a bit in the first season and annie's hairstyle was the same as the female titan so if we go you know like a to b in both situations i think we're gonna guess that reiner is that huge titan dude um the hybrid the hybrid hybrid. yeah um Mm -hmm. and then obviously he hangs out with bear tolt a lot and they were very suspicious this episode when we'll discuss like uh about that later but like bear tolt kind of gives him a look as if like acknowledging like hey we're gonna like go do this thing and it's like well yeah way to make it super suspicious Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah they they uh they're they're definitely part of something bigger than it appears you know definitely. yeah they're doing something in the background some shady shit going on somewhere <laughs> yeah 
one of the the things that I wanted to point out too is all the the animals and bugs. It's like mm-hmm. what's what's going on with that? You know, they have them all running together, and it's like, mm-hmm. are they on a team? Do they control them? The Titans control them. Um, I remember from one of the, I, I believe it was the OP of um, the second OP in season one. They showed a flash real quick of like a giant praying mantis between some of the Titan imagery, and so is it is it hinting at that? We never got like a giant praying mantis monster in first season but you know do those correlate do they they go together it's like you you know we don't really know yeah like praying mantises also like don't they like eat each other right they like eat the heads i know the 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 female eats like the the mating male like after they've mated and stuff so yeah it may have to do with that i mean you know titans are eating people you know kind of cannibalism theme uh that we've seen themselves too they eat like fellow titans sometimes don't they yeah when because they i don't remember which episode in season one where it happened but like they all attacked like one titan um Mm -hmm. and like ate him it was kind of yeah, weird. Yeah. It was a little nuts. <laughs> um, but many questions with the with the opening. I think you know, yeah, it's... they the animal scene you're you're talking about too. They had the the animals, the, like the giant animals, running alongside the the newly introduced um, like the the beast m- monkey abnormal, yeah. the beast titan who showed mm-hmm. up and like man. It, he he's crazy too with like being able to talk and things like that so mm-hmm. what well, what do you guys think about him like what did you like him as a as a new titan yeah i mean i mean he's creepy <laughs> yeah he's definitely, definitely creepy looking yeah it's also interesting that they made him well i mean obviously it's part of the the story like i don't follow the manga or anything but like uh it's weird that he's like more sentient than or more intelligent than the other titans like he can talk and Mm -hmm. yeah it makes you kind of question you know how much intelligence that each of them have i mean we know the hybrids are different from the regulars um and they have some sort of communication and can communicate with uh, the regular titans like uh i know annie when she's in the forest she screams and gets like a bunch of titans to come in um and like help her um, but this guy's like actually talking to them. Um, but note that he doesn't have like complete control. I, I think the the little Titan that was uh, going ham on uh, on your <laughs> yeah. boy, um, he tells him to stop. But then he like stops for a little bit, but then doesn't listen. Needs to get uh, politely reminded uh, to stop by getting his head crushed. Um, <laughs> yeah, and he's tr- <laughs> chomping down on his legs. Yeah. Uh, so it, he legs. doesn't have he doesn't have what it seems like full control, but they're they're scared of him, um, and they know that he he is either important or has um, more power, uh, and they're mm-hmm. scared of the power of him. Some something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, because he could probably just kill all of them. Pretty yeah, easily. just swing. Swing mm-hmm. his arm, and then they're like, oh, yeah. they're gone. I feel bad for that horse. Yeah, the <laughs> when he was ignoring the guy on the building, he's like, just grabs the horse and chucks it at him. I was like, yeah. oh, poor horse. Well, yeah, he just like <laughs> totally assumed like, oh, it must be like dumb like the other Titans. And then he just yeah, like picks the up Titans the horse. Don't attack. They don't yeah, attack Titans animals. don't attack animals, yeah. But uh, he uh, he grabbed him. He got him. <laughs> he got him, and he chucked him real uh, far. A cup- a couple of things that I wanted to mention about uh, the fur type when he, you know, talks and you're like, whoa. Um, one thing he says is uh, we reside in the nape. So he's it, it brings about a couple of things. He's like he knows where the weak spot is uh, when talking about the weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, but does he have enough sense like uh, the hybrid Titans where, you know, Annie, when she's getting attacked there, she would cover her her neck uh, in order to not get hit. Um, you know, it seems like almost strange that he didn't know that or like he knew that but like didn't know to protect himself something something along those lines you know what you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. yeah like he he understands that they know that their weak spot is back there and Mm -hmm. then does that then mean the way he said it like we reside there does that mean all titans are hybrid humans and they just have certain levels of sentience 
or something does something is something there that houses them is it just their brain that he's talking about or is it you know actively people uh that live in there uh because i know every time aaron comes out of the hybrid mode it's always in the back of the neck and it shows him kind of mm-hmm. like in utero almost back there when he's controlling it and they pulled um, annie out from back there as well right mm-hmm. right exactly so it's it it makes you wonder why they chose the sub people chose the word you know reside as opposed to you know another word um uh, uh yeah. the second yeah it's it's kind of kind of strange um the second thing um when he takes the 3d maneuver gear he says i'll take this back to the others implying that there are more like him or that mm-hmm. he is in cahoots with you know a bunch more of these abnormal titans and does he mean more hybrid humans um or does he mean specifically more beast titan or his type of titan kind of we talked about it earlier and we talked about, you know, maybe it's dividing kind of factions. You know, we have the humans, we have the uh, hybrids, and then we have these sentient abnormals. Um, are the sentient abnormals with the uh, hybrid humans or are they separate? So we kind of we kind of don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Right. And something I found interesting, too, is um, even the, the hybrid um, titans, like they're they're obviously like, you know, Annie, she's a, a human as well. And she can talk just fine. But then when she goes into Titan form, she can just scream to communicate, you know. So if if the beast abnormal uh, beast Titan is also like a hybrid, does that just mean he's been a hybrid longer and he's been able to grasp more like control over like an evolution. being a Titan? Yeah, like or, or he's evolved or something because he also has hair, whereas the others mm. don't. So. Yeah, yeah, most of like curious. Annie doesn't even have skin. Um, I mean, Aaron mm-hmm. has skin, but it's like Annie's all muscle. Um, Same with we uh, have, what we're assuming is Reiner. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. look he looks like he's basically just a, um, like muscle in that. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. the giant the giant Titan that kicks open the first wall, you know, also just muscle. So mm-hmm. it's it's almost like they're evolving into like a new types of uh, Mm -hmm. titans or something like that it's it's pretty interesting so i'm super curious to see where they go with that with all of that um yeah yeah Uh, and then we kind of we kind of get um before that a little bit backing up you know we have the Mm -hmm. the splitting of the two teams of the 104th division you know we got sasha going north uh to her town that she mentions and then you know connie very sad uh going south uh with his group stating you know oh that's where the titans came from so and we'll see that next episode um it's called i'm home um and so sasha is going to get to see her fam uh and the village and we'll get to see a little bit of backstory as well as uh we know that aaron and levi are uh, are on the way uh to save or to help um the 104th so We'll uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. But uh, I know Rolando, you had a few points about the uh, the ending song. Um, mm-hmm. I'll let you kind of talk about that. Yeah. So there's um, if you look at the the images they show in the in the ending, um, they show like almost what kind of looks like a story um, of like maybe like kind of like old history, um, kind of like you know like cave drawings or like you know like old medieval style books like medieval tapestries almost yeah mm-hmm. um stained glass windows yeah mm-hmm. and one of the, like it's it's pretty like significant what's going on in those images so like one of the first ones we see are kind of looks like titans being worshipped by humans almost like we're not sure like are these like you know like godly beings or are they just titans um and then like you see another image of the royal of like a royal family and they're committing cannibalism. Like there's a dead body, you see its skeleton, and you see a bunch of weeping um family members eating flesh. And like you can what you can take to assume from that image is that they're eating the flesh of the dead of the dead. So like what I'm thinking is like could the overarching like way of how humans become hybrid titans like is it in the flesh in the blood or something like do Mm -hmm. were they like gifted the ability to turn into titans by by titans before and like the way they keep that on going is by consuming the flesh of the deceased 
Um, so like it's also kind of ties back to that, um, Drew, you mentioned the praying mantis Im- um, imagery where like the female praying mantis would eat their her mate. So it's like kind of like this theme of cannibalism, like are humans titans, are titans humans, you know, like what is what is really going on in this food chain? And then mm-hmm. um, you see more images flash by um, and it kind of, you know, kind of supports this possible theory that maybe the church and the royal government itself is probably like enslaving hu- like the masses. Um, yeah. And then there's another image where it, sh- it shows like dead bodies on the ground that then begin to rise. So like what I'm what I'm currently taking that to kind of symbolize is there's the dead and then they rise again as Titans possibly because they do tower in the images when they rise up. And then Mm. at the very end of the, of the ending song, you've got this large, like carved out X in stone over this image of like a Titan, like goddess. And, um, you could kind of take that to symbolize either like a resistance against the Titans or like a, and, or a resistance against like the, like the church and the government as in like, no, we're like, we're pushing away from like worshiping these Titans and all of that. Because like, if you kind of think about it, it's kind of weird how there's this obsession with the Titans, even though like they're, their enemies and like, they're in the walls. Everyone's worshiping like these wall cultists are worshiping the walls and like they clearly know there are Titans in the walls. So it's kind of like, are you worshiping the Titans? Like are the Titans your gods kind of kind of deal? Yeah. Real quickly on that point, too, before we move on, um, I wanted to mention, too, how, uh, you know, how important it is that these walls are now falling by what we think is the hybrid titans you know knocking down the walls uh to let in all the other titans um it's it's showing because we we lost the first wall in the first season now we just lost the second wall there's only one wall left and that's where you know the the highest aristocrats live uh the head of the government all that stuff they're they're behind this final wall um that is yet to be breached but you know we still have all these titans streaming in stuff like that so is it the hybrids you know revolting against the 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 government and trying to free everybody uh do we you know where where are they housed are they housed within the government are they part of this you know illuminati type group or do they live outside the walls we talked about that a little bit um you know are there are all is all of humanity housed within the three walls or do we have people who are outside the walls too so a bunch of questions you know for for the future to keep in mind uh moving forward um between you know the different groups of humans hybrids and you know titans Another point on that is like we've got like clearly Armin's parents left um, right. left outside the wall to search for something. And then we've got Aaron's father who consistently was traveling outside of the walls. And he was essentially the one that gave Aaron that ability to transform. So he clearly he clearly knows something um, more about what the situation is. And there's also the fact that when... At the end of season one, um, Annie's objective is to capture Aaron. Mm-hmm. If if Aaron is such a big threat to whatever her faction is doing, it would make sense for them to just kill him. But instead, right. they want to capture him. So that's kind of like a hmm. Like there must be something going on where they they need Aaron. Maybe like maybe He's his father plays something in some in sort of yeah. way. Yeah, some kind of like link between between. Uh, <clears throat> hybrids and and something else like he's got to be important for some reason right yeah that kind of um, plays may, into the maybe it just yeah. has to do with how he transforms too because i mean you see annie and uh, the other hybrids they're mostly muscle and he is like a pure type of full skin. Yeah. yeah yeah so maybe maybe it has something to do with that you maybe know he's we like don't, we don't the know. next stage along the line or something right, like that right. and they're like how are we gonna do that or we can use him somehow right it's right. like a and he seems to be able to control himself a bit more mm-hmm. than like he seems well, to the, understand with the help of mikasa <laughs> oh yeah sorry yeah he needs he needs that help he needs the waifu <laughs> the waifu the waifu saves everyone yeah the one that <laughs> like honestly like mikasa is like a like a mary sue 
she like yeah. <laughs> c- clearly clearly the best fighter out there like i don't know like it's the asian powers or something <laughs> but just just the worst personality <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just sits there and doesn't say anything <laughs> she's just dull <laughs> Aaron, sleep yeah. Aaron, <laughs> okay. eat. don't touch Aaron. <laughs> oh man well there's definitely you know a ton a ton going on in this episode and and it's like it's giving us a, a lot of mysteries and questions that I, I'm really excited to see how they, you know, answer them in the episodes to come. Um, next week's episode should be should be entertaining to watch as well, just to get that backstory and see where they go with the story. Um, so far, though, I think they've done a great job. They've met my expectations of waiting three and a half years, so that's good because the longer you take, the more people are like, "This better be great! Like this, right. this thing better be amazing! Like this better be the best just anime I've seen ever." So they definitely met my expectations. Um, well, do you guys? Hmm? Yeah. Um, I have a question for you guys. Um, yeah. What What do you want to see from the next episode? Because like I'm, I know they're gonna like they put an emphasis on showing that Sasha is going back to her village, but like they also show like images of like that Connie is going back to where he is, and clearly like there's that section where Reinhardt Reiner, not Reinhardt. Um, <laughs> where, where Reiner, um, like volunteers to go to the South with, with Connie. And then he tells Bertolt, like Bertolt, you're coming too. Right. And there's that weird kind of interaction between the two where Bertolt kind of like goes, like has this realization like, Oh yeah, like we're going like, there's something going on there. And I yeah. hope we see something more along mm-hmm. like what's going on with that. Cause they're going towards yeah. where the Titans are coming from. I'm definitely curious to see that. Um, I I could really care less about Sasha. I mean, she's funny, but she's she's like the comic eh. relief. Yeah, I I, I want to see more development in the story. I mean, that's one of the main things that I like about Attack on Titan is these like cryptic almost societies, if you want to say. Um, but like all the stuff that's going around in the background. I also really look forward to seeing the uh, the middle screen because they give a lot of like information, whether it be mm-hmm. like the humans' technology or information on the Titans. I always find that um, super cool to read. Um, yeah, those yeah. those little middle things are definitely interesting. I, I like I look forward to those as well. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping we get we get a little bit more background on the Beast Titan. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm hoping we we figure out where Annie's going, uh, what they're doing with that, and then uh, maybe a little bit more story on you know this fucking Titan inside of a wall. Like, <laughs> let's yeah. let's talk about that. You know, yeah. Come, I would, come I would on, love Pastor Nick. On that. <laughs> yeah, quit holding out on us, bro. <laughs> but he was like, I'll just you know throw me off the throw me off the yeah. wall. I don't there's care. also I'm what was it you. in the in the middle of the episode there's the whole like we we see the beast titan and all that and we kind of like brushed over captain mika and how oh, uh-huh. he just gets kind of destroyed there yeah it's kind yeah. of funny because everyone is like triggering death flags for this dude you're just yeah. like oh he's the only the second best to captain levi and like <laughs> you gotta have faith in him and it's just like all right he's gonna die and then like he yep. just like says that line like oh like you only stop fighting when you like uh or you only lose when you stop fighting or something and it's like dude mm-hmm. this guy is gonna die he's like he triggering is, his own death <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah he he was definitely he was definitely gonna die even even when he was standing on top of the building and he was uh he was uh, saying like, okay, that should be enough. You know, I was yeah. like, Oh God, son- he's going to die. It's going to show up right now. And he's going to, yeah. he's going to be gone. It was a pretty um, gruesome death too. Yeah. It right. Was. So Titan yeah. gang bang. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, there was that one Titan that kind of was just like sitting there like, Hey, Hey, what's hey up? girl, chilling hey, girl. against the, <laughs> chilling against the house. Yeah. So yeah. can I eat him yet? <laughs> uh, when he gives you that look, <laughs> you know you're in trouble <laughs> it's like one of those memes oh. like where um you wish your man looks at you like this titan looks at captain mika <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> uh all right well you know we we definitely have a ton of questions that we're not gonna be able to answer until the next episodes come out some cool things to keep in mind um I think uh, we should transition over to our next segment, though, um, and keep these 
some of these questions up in the air for our own thoughts and people who listen to think about, and we'll, you know, we can come back to it next week. Um, this next segment we like to call happy hour, um, is where we're going to talk about not the main topic of, um, or main anime of the week. So this week it was attack on Titan in this happy hour. We would talk about like soccer quest and the third anime that we're going to cover. Um, so right now, um, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to throw it out that we, we picked soccer request. Um, I'm going to give it to Rolando to kind of explain a little bit behind the thought process as to why we picked this show. So if you take over from there. Okay. So, um, one of the main reasons why, um, we pick soccer request is, a. Uh, Drew and I are pretty familiar with um, a bunch of the shows that PA Works, that studio, puts out. And um, we both also mentioned um, that Glass Lip was a terrible show. Um, terrible. Which, unfortunately, was produced <laughs> by PA Works. Um, that was kind of, you know, like one of those little, like, let's forget this happened. I'm pretty sure I saw in the pre- <laughs> in one of the previews for Soccer Request, like, they kind of like, oh, like, from the studio that brought you... Um, Hanasaku Iroha and Shirobako, they just kind of like skip over glass slip, <laughs> pretend it didn't really happen. And they um, just glass over they it. Just, yeah, they glassed over it. Good one. <laughs> um, the, so like this show kind of is giving me like um, a vibe of like Shirobako and Hanasaku Iroha. In terms of like the main character looks like she's like a pretty, you know, independent, strong female lead. Kind of like, um, um, was it Hana in Hana Sakura Iroha? And then it's also like that work, um, like there's like real, like it's not like real working society because like the premise is kind of like, oh, like there are these girls that are like learning to become like, what was it? Like not kings or, but like, you know, like they're royal, like aristocrats right. for like different countries or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, I mean, it's PA works. It looks like it's going to be, it's going to be a good show. It looks like they're going to overcome their, um, you know, mishaps that they had with like a glass slip. Um, well, it'll definitely, it'll definitely be drawn well. Um, you know, the studio is super consistent with yeah. their art. It's always, it's always done very well. Um, you know, this time you know, a bunch of cute girls doing cute shit while, <laughs> you know, trying to, get tourism up in their town you know it, it, it i think it'll be a good slice of life with uh, a little bit of story to hold it all together um looking forward to to what it what what happens um if it can emulate even you know 20 percent of shirobako i think we'll have we'll have something worth following here but you know if if they take the glass slipper out we might be in trouble I've uh, I've I've only ever seen Shirobako, I think, by uh, PA Works, so I have high hopes for the anime. I don't have the same uh, same uh, experience with Glass Slip, so I thought you I'm saw going Hana Sakura Iroha. No, I don't think so. The I'd one, have to go check, but the girl that um, gets sent to live with her grandmother, who owns a um, like a hot spring resort. Mm maybe i'd have to go check i might that does sound familiar now yeah um i i'm terrible with names <laughs> um so but so that that's the the second uh that's the second show we're going to be watching um and and you know following here on uh on anime on draft uh the the third show is still up for decision um and the way we're going to decide on it is we each have um two animes per person um and we're going to watch those and, you know, see where they go in the first episodes, first one or two episodes, and then maybe you know, come up with a decision based off which one looks the strongest. And like it would be a good addition to our podcast here. Um, so I'm personally going to be watching the two I'm going to be looking at are Zero Kara, Hajimeru, Maho no Show. I'm just going to call it Maho no Show because it's shorter and easier. Um, and then the second one I'm going to be watching is Dan Machi spinoff season two type thing where instead of following Hestia and um, Bell, is it Bell? Bell. Mm-hmm. We're going to be following the blonde eye, eyes, uh, Valens, Valenstein. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. And I, I really liked uh, uh, Hestia and uh, and Bell. So I, I have high hopes for this one. Um I'm sad then, they didn't straight up give us a, a new season of uh, the Hestia mm, and Bell yeah. part, but it's it'll it'll still be entertaining. I think it'll be funny. 
Yeah, I, I was. I'm bummed. I want another season. That I, I finished that anime, and I was just like, "Oh, there's got to be a season two that I can binge." Come on, let me <laughs> let me get it. And there wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't, and there isn't. So, mm-hmm. but it, it'll still be. It'll still be really good. Um, the other anime, uh, Maho no Show. It's. Uh, I'll just read a. You know, quick from the description. It's. It's a world basically about witches, and everyone knows they practice sorcery, but they don't know anything about how they study magic. There's a half man, half beast mercenary and he wants to become a human and he meets a witch and uh, and it basically just changes his life. So um, it it, lo- it sounds like it should be pretty interesting to me. Um, I know you are you both going to watch that one as well? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be not, watching that. You're not? I'll, you I'll watch Verona? it. Yeah, it looks interesting. I, th- I think it'll be a fun, a fun show to watch. Um, so, Drew, uh, what were the two shows you're going to be uh, watching? So first off, uh, I chose Arrow Manga Sensei because the name is godlike. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, no, but it, it, it looks like it's going to be a funny, you know, comedy um, drama, maybe a little bit of romance in there. Um, a brother and sister team writing Arrow Manga together. I mean, what can be uh, be better than that? And uh, Rolando was kind enough to point out that the main character's name is Masamune. <laughs> is is that going to be a new thing now? Like everyone, <laughs> we've had we had a show last season with that, so we're continuing. The tread here um but i think i think it'll be a good one the next one i'm gonna watch is a uh, renai uh bokun it seems like a kind of a death note spinoff but instead of a death note there's a kiss note um and so anyone who has their name written in that will uh fall in love if they kiss each other regardless of any circumstances a funny you know supernatural um romance uh, probably some etchy notes in there harem i'm getting a harem vibe um just from the uh, splash art so oh, should be yeah. should be a good time um the art looks like to, to love rue yeah it does <laughs> but uh does. yeah i'm looking looking forward to both of those i'll, I'll keep my cool, eye on cool. them um what about you Rolando? um okay so i'll be covering or i mean i'll be probably watching through the whole season um sakurata mm-hmm. reset Um, which is a new um, IP, I don't know, new series, and uh, Saikano Season 2. So uh, Sakurada Reset is a... It's it's kind of got like a similar similar type premise to, uh, what is it, Uh, Kokoro Connect, where, um, you know, like you've got like a group of, um, of like teenagers and like, stuff is like happening around them like involving like supernatural um things like in this case like half the population of sakurata is which is like a small town like they have powers like some sort of unique power it says in the description like you know range from being able to enter the mind of a cat to resetting the world back to a certain point in time which um if you if anyone's seen kokoro connect like like one of the one of the arcs they switch bodies like the group they switch bodies and they have to deal with what's going on um with that and so like it seems like it's going to be an interesting like mystery drama type show um so i'm hoping it's good um and then we've got saikano season two so if you haven't seen the first season the um the full title is Sainai heroine no sodate kata and then this version is called, or they add the flat symbol next to it. So I'm assuming there's some sort of music related um, part to the story here where they're probably going to cover more of um, Tomoya's cousin who is like doing the music for the game they're making. So I'm assuming that's happening or they're just doing some weird Japanese thing where they just add a fucking symbol at the end of the title and then <laughs> go like oh there's the second season we just added this thing at the end this looked cool <laughs> but yeah that's a like a rom-com it's pretty it's pretty the first season was funny it's got a lot of uh clever writing to it the writer for this uh light novel series used to write a lot of visual novels so he kind of does a lot of like little like satirical like tongue-in-cheek pokes at like tropes um that happen in those visual novel stories cool that sounds like uh that sounds like a fun one to watch so definitely gotta let us know uh how that one turns out um 
these these animes that uh, the three that we mentioned or the two that we mentioned and then the third one that we picked aren't going to be the only ones we're covering. We're in this happy hour section. Um, if any of us are watching an anime personally and and somebody else isn't watching it, we and anything like crazy happens that we just want to bring into the to the group and talk about on this podcast, we'll be talking about it uh, here as well. So any you know pers- animes that just we're watching might come up at some point. Um, and we're going to probably, you know, refer back to previous animes that we've seen in the past when things relate or remind us of, you know, another show that we've, we've watched or, or, uh, seen in the past. And our last topic of the day is we're going to quickly go over, um, the, some of the things that we watched during uh, winter of 2017 and kind of what we thought about the season. Um, I personally liked what I watched, during the season, um, I thought I thought there were a lot of good animes that I enjoyed. Um, there, and then there were some that were just kind of odd and confusing uh, for me personally. Like rewrite, I was just like, this is kind of just out there. <laughs> Where is it going? What no what idea. are they doing with this? <laughs> and it's just it's here, it's there, it's everywhere, <laughs> it's nowhere. It's just one of those animes. But um, I know, think. Uh, Konosuba was a big winner yeah. of, oh, yeah. uh, oh, for of sure. winter anime. Uh, I wish it had more episodes. I mean, 10 episodes just isn't enough. Um, it's so short. We got, you know, you get all the crazy hijinks of, uh, you know, Aqua, um, Darkness, and uh, fucking, what's his Megumin. name? Megumin. Megumin and Kazuma. No, oh, Kazuma, that's the name. Kazuma. You get, you know, you get, you get all their hijinks and crazy stuff. Um, I think Darkness's character came along really well. Um, mm-hmm. She was one of my in the first season. I didn't like her that much, but she just became ridiculous uh, during this season. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, hilarious. Ex- so explosion funny. magic continues to be the best type of magic, and um, you know, Forever. maybe I'll be maybe I'll be signing up uh, as a Axis Cult member uh, here soon. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna uh, go with uh eris <laughs> no she pads uh, her no, she, she pads her chest. yeah she pads her chest so oh that's you know, right that's right <laughs> can't, can't be uh can't be involved with that um <laughs> another another one that uh, we had a heated argument about was uh masamune uh the masamune no revenge anime um it uh, was so good it was for great. about nine <laughs> episodes and then they decided to derail it and destroy and what trigger they had everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> I don't I don't understand. Like you don't. It, it's kind of like a crutch, you know. Like, like it's it's like a writing crutch. You're trying to mm-hmm. introduce some sort of tension and drama to the story, and it's kind of like forced, you know. Like they just add mm-hmm. in this um, this character who like clearly the main heroine Aki thinks like is old Masamune who is now skinny, but he used to be this chubby little fat kid. Mm -hmm. And so like, just because this, this guy comes in and looks similar to him, they're just, she's just like, Oh, it's Masamune. You have a friend named Masamune. Like, I mean, (laughs) and you didn't put two and two together. I don't, (laughs) I can, I can understand. Cause like, he's like, he's not like a fat short kid anymore. Like he's like this like skinny dude that's like pretty popular now, but it's like her character is just like, I just can't stand her. She doesn't get any better like throughout the whole show. She did like she like she had some development and it just went back to zero when they introduced this character, which like. Well, and he's surrounded by so many better characters. Yoshino is a great character. She's the maid character. Neko is, you know an awesome character i mean she has her flaws and you know the um what is it the uh student or the uh class class rep rep. she she, she's a good character like Mm -hmm. you have all these characters who are awesome around you and you're gonna go with this lifeless bitchy person and like i get you're doing it for revenge but it's just like you're starting to fall for her. everybody can see it and it's just uh and then yeah. you you throw in you know this this guy who comes in to break everything up and then they just ended it and it was just uh, and what's the point in continuing that revenge when you have so many yeah. other better options it's like you know what screw I, it i yeah, don't need revenge honestly. i'll just like go with this way better person and be happy yeah, and not exactly. like like it's just uh 
I think but, it, I think if it gets another season, I'll watch it. But those last three episodes were the struggle bus. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the last episode like was, was a bit closer to the level of yeah. comedy mm-hmm. that happened. But guess guess who guess who wasn't in it? Like the whole episode, the <laughs> the the new Masamune or whatever yeah. you want to call him. The, oh like, yeah, the <laughs> fat Masamune. He wasn't in it at all, and it was yeah. great. And he was locked it in, wasn't a, great. It was in a shed. <laughs> My Where favorite part of that he needs episode. to stay in there. <laughs> that my favorite part about that episode though was definitely when he had the cold and he was on stage and he like fell over and he's like my chronic he illness like, fell over. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's like, and then they're like oh oh yeah hold on wait, let's let's ad lib this. Are you okay? Are are you okay? <laughs> yeah. That was that was a really good part. That was one of we'll, my favorite parts of the the anime. But. Yeah, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on the second season. I don't. But, uh, it's I don't not going to get a second season. I, yeah, I don't have. I my, I'm not holding my breath. But uh, the the last two that were kind of jump out uh, hits were Gabriel Dropout and Dragon Maid, both kind of similar um, mm-hmm. in how they're just kind of no real story, cute girls doing cute shit, um, <laughs> but. Anything you guys wanted to mention about those other than being better than what we had anticipated? Gabriel Dropout was hilarious. I mean, if you're looking for laughs, that's the that's a good place to go. Uh, Gabriel Dropout was 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 hilarious. Like if you're looking for a similar type of humor that you saw in uh, in Konosuba last season, um, Gabriel um, Dropout was like like up there you know she's mm-hmm. like uh like you've got satania who is basically as dumb as aqua mm-hmm. um and uh th- so much can happen just from having this character that's r- ridiculously dumb <laughs> yeah yeah i think <laughs> so, i think satania is my favorite character by she's far. so she's, funny she's great <laughs> with the melon bread she's always like my yeah. melon bread <laughs> Oh, and so then um, Dra- Dragon Maid was, I mean, it was decent. It, it it wasn't my favorite show by far, but I mean, it had it had some laughs. Uh, some of the characters are memorable. The art was gorgeous. I, I really enjoyed the art and the character design. But other than that, nothing that stood out too that's much more, for me. That's more of your, like a, an actual slice of life, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no story There's at literally all. no just, story to it. Yeah, just No doing, plot. There's dragons just... and there's Yuri and there's girls and... Yeah, and they're doing things, and <laughs> yeah, you've got it. <laughs> little baby dragon Kana, mm-hmm. and she's basically there just so that you can go like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, she's a chubby, chubby, fat little girl. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, how we like babies, you- right? Just like chubby, yeah, fat, chubby and, and fat. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sitting here, and I just finished my beer, so. Um, but I think that's uh, all we've got this week for, for the show, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so mm-hmm. I just want to thank everybody for, for listening today, uh, to our very, very first episode. We definitely, uh, hope we have, you know, improvements to make, but, uh, if you have any suggestions, feel free to, you know, drop them at our social media. If you liked what you heard and you want to hear some more of, uh, what we've got on draft, subscribe to our podcast, official anime on draft. That's Instagram. Twitter is anime on draft. Um, YouTube also anime on draft. And our Facebook page is anime on <laughs> oh. draft as well. You can also um, <laughs> you can also follow <laughs> us uh, or contact us at our WordPress site, animeondraft.wordpress.com. If you have any suggestions, we're looking to improve as much as we can and come up with some more great content for yeah. you guys. Or next tell week. us what beers to drink. Or Suggest tell us what topic. beers to drink. Uh, anime recommendations. Suggest a topic. If there's something you really want to hear us talk about, feel free to... You know, drop us uh, something on that on the WordPress site. Um, other than that, uh, I just want to thank everyone for being here. And you know, do you guys have yeah, anything thanks. you want to say? Thanks for listening. That's it. Join yeah. us next time. Awesome. Thanks for listening. Well, I just finished my beer here, so um, I think uh, that's all we've got for this week of Anime on Draft. Um, I hope you had fun listening today. We definitely are happy to have you here. Um, we're uh, going to be making another... Oh, God damn it. Just let it all out. Let it 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 out. I'm like starting to fumble on my words. let it all out. I'm like... I'm like...
I'm like sitting here and I'm like, if I say another word, it's going to be, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay. God damn it. Now I can't stop laughing.